Welcome everyone to today's exclusive summit where mining analyst Eric Lemieux will moderate an interview with Vior's CEO, Mark Fedoswick, and the executive vice president, Laurent Eustache, as well as Ken Williamson, Vior's consultant from 3D Geo Solution. Together, the guys will take you through the new geological model at Vior's flagship Belterre Gold Project in Quebec and the work plan going forward. Please note, due to availability, the interview was pre-recorded and edited to focus on the key topics. After the presentation, Mark, Laurent, and Ken will be accepting questions. As a reminder, you can submit your questions to the Q&A panel found on the right hand of your screen at any time during the presentation. Lastly, there will be forward looking statements made today, so please be aware of the risks associated with these statements. And so without further ado, let me start the presentation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the technical summit. Um, it's a pleasure for me to present the Belterre Gold Project set to advance rapidly a new geological model. Uh, my name is Eric Lemieux. Uh, I'm an independent mining analyst based in the province of Quebec, and I have the pleasure of moderating this technical session uh, on Vior Inc., ticker VIO on the Venture Exchange. Uh, just shortly to discuss about who I am, I'm a professional geologist trained in the province of Quebec uh, at Laval University in Quebec City. Uh, I've been involved in the mineral exploration industry for the last 30 years. A little bit of gray if you want. I am a graduate from the Colorado School of Mines in Mineral Economics, uh, which is a second master's degree. And uh, my career has evolved from uh, being an exploration geologist, working uh, for companies such as Canvial, Miranda, and SOCAM, uh, into becoming a, uh, a consultant for the regulators, um, the Quebec Securities Commission, and being behind a little bit all through the uh, non National Instrument 43101. And then I became a sell side mining, mining analyst with Laurentian Bank Securities. Long story short, as an analyst, and I cover approximately um, 15 companies, mostly focused on the Northern Hemisphere. It's my honor right now to introduce uh, the executive team of Yaw. Uh, we have uh, Mark Vedefowicz, who is the CEO. Mark is an, a veteran industry in the sense that he's been. Uh, a first vice president with uh, Wood Gundy CIBC, has about three years experience more on the financing side. And his right arm, if you want, is Laurent Eustache, who is the executive VP. Laurent, I know very well. Uh, he's a trained uh, geologist, both in Quebec and in France, uh, worked for the industry, such as companies as Minorizon in the Casa Berardi area in the Abitibi with Agnico Eagle. And uh, like I say, he's a graduate uh, with uh, both uh, a master's degree and also an MBA, and worked for CDEX, uh, which is the uh, Quebec, uh, if you want, uh, one of the Quebec Inc. Uh, financial institutions as a uh, portfolio manager. And so the team of y'all uh, on the executive level, I can say, are very experienced. I also have the, the pleasure of introducing uh, Ken Wilmington, who is a consultant geologist. He has over 15 years of experience uh, in the mining industry, specializing uh, both uh, in structural geology and the uh, 3D, 3D litho structural modeling, uh, and also mineral resource estimation. Uh, he has an MSc also um, from Laval University uh, in Quebec City in structural geology, as I had also. And he has experience in the Red Lake camp, uh, both with uh, Gold Corp and uh, with Premier Gold. Uh, Gold Corp is now with, uh, if you want, now is known as Newmont. Uh, and uh, Premier Gold uh, is now known as I-80 and Focus in Nevada. But long story short, he has experience in the, the Greenstone Belts, both uh, in the Red Lake area and in the uh, Abitibi. Um, he was involved with the Obayan Project in the Abitibi with the resource estimate. And so he's uniquely positioned to uh, give us uh, great insight on the geological modeling following uh, what I would call some modern, um, comprehensive data um, compilation on the Beltar project. Before I delve deeper on the uh, the Beltar Beltar project and 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 start uh, getting um, some technical questions, I just want to tell the audience that uh, as I said, I um, I am a mining analyst. I have been covering uh, Via for the last three years, and uh, I do write my uh, assessments on LinkedIn. So if people are interested to see my writings, uh, they can uh, follow my stuff on LinkedIn. And I just want to say that I did do an interesting site visit back in July on the Beltar project. So I do have a little bit of insight. And in that regards, I'd like to uh, perhaps uh, bring the discussion to the reasons of why Vyar acquired the Beltar project and what was the process 
behind all of this. So I would I would like to have Mark maybe give us some insight on how you guys got, if I could use the expression, got your fingers into the belt area. Mark? Thank you, Eric, and uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so a little background on, on Beltaire, Laura and I, back in the summer of uh, 2020, uh, last year, uh, set forward a, a project generation criteria for a flagship project. And our objective was to acquire or consolidate a uh, top tier district scale goal project uh, that would meet our rigid internal uh, project generation criteria. And that hopefully would uh, uh, be able to attract the attention of a, of a producer down the road. Uh, the project generation criteria was effectively, uh, it had to be situated in a mining friendly jurisdiction. In our case, it's Quebec. Uh, it had a unique location. Uh, and in our case with Beltaire, it was a past producing high grade mining camp, uh, which, which certainly met uh, the criteria of being close to uh, an existing or a former producer. Uh, it was also situated uh, 95 kilometers south of Rain Aranda, uh, had excellent infrastructure nearby, year-round accessibility. So unlike uh, in James Bay, we can we can drill year-round. And it, we, it also had to have the potential to advance rapidly uh, to a more advanced exploration stage and hopefully build an economic resource. So Beltair met all of that criteria. Uh, we had the, the potential for the first time in over 50 years to consolidate this mining camp that had never been consolidated. It was previously a very fragmented camp. Um, and now we're able to uh, uh, adopt a very systematic approach uh, to, to exploration. Uh, we were able to assemble this consolidation at a very reasonable cost. Uh, and we've assembled a true mining camp uh, with excellent high-grade potential. And uh, I'll let the uh, technical team uh, delve into the, the technical potential and the opportunity uh, for a discovery. Excellent, Mark. Um, effectively, uh, I'm just curious, Laurent, how did you guys ex execute that, that opportunity to get the, uh, the Beltaire project? Yes, Eric, uh, I'm also pleased to be there to share with, uh, with you today. When you, we, we look at that uh, opportunity, uh, we thought about the strategy to execute on that uh, opportunity. And the first aspect was uh, to, to acquire and consolidate uh, properly the, the camp. And our first priority was the, the heart of the Belter Old Mining Camp, which, uh, which is what we call now the historic mining trend. It composed mainly with uh, the concessions and the Jack property. And we also recognize the high fragmented uh, ownership of the camp mm -hmm. that you usually see in these uh, old, old mining camp. And uh, quickly realized, as well as, uh, I would say, our partners uh, uh, that we were negotiating with, uh, that the value of the consolidated project as a whole uh, was greater than the sum of its parts. So uh, that led us to negotiate and sign up uh, about uh, 10 acquisition and option agreement, uh, which today aggregates uh, district scale goal project of almost 300 square kilometers. So the hectares. Uh, 30, 300. Uh, 30,000 hectares, which is a good land position. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so the other aspects uh, of, uh, uh, of that, that strategy was to assemble the appropriate team uh, to execute uh, that with the right set of skills and executing the states of the heart advanced exploration drilling and the communication with uh, local communities. And in that regard, uh, our two managers, Christian and Mathieu, both highly experienced, are uh, a cornerstone on the uh, operation front at Dior. I did so meet finally, Mathieu Gay. Uh, sorry, I'll just say I did yeah, meet sure. Mathieu Gay last summer at uh, during a site visit, and uh, effectively that was one of my um, observations: is that you had a very good team on on the field, and I think that's a good prerequisite. Yeah, it's fundamental to acquire good data and to manage them as well uh, properly. So, and 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 the other aspect is uh, to fast track a functional functional exploration strategy, considering the advanced type of exploration. Uh, I mean, with a huge amount of data, 
we decided to uh, rapidly surround uh, ourselves with uh, one of the best in class uh, structural 3D modeling consultant with uh, Ken Williamson with us today and who will elaborate more on the technical aspect of that uh, strategy in a few minutes. Excellent. So maybe just give us an assessment of what you guys have done since the acquisition in terms of, as you said, you, you acquired the land position, consolidated this fragmented land package, but uh, um, I don't know if you just want to go in terms of what you guys did in terms of field work and, and, and just to prepare this, this ongoing drill program that just started about a week ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say, uh, Eric, we've been really busy and the team has worked really hard uh, th these last months uh, on a so short uh, time frame uh, and executing a systematic and rigorous strategy in order to prepare that drilling campaign. So basically, we've completed two, two full months of prospection, validating historical uh, work and uh, locating the exact position of, uh, of these uh, past work, uh, leading us to confirm the high grade component of the property. And uh, we've also completed a high resolution NAC survey on the whole property, which has never been done uh, on that particular area. Uh, we've also uh, uh, consolidating uh, under uh, uh, one database, uh, all the past information that we've been able to, uh, to get. And most of these information uh, are from hard copies and uh, all technical reports. So there was lots of work done to put that in uh, in the 21st century with uh, with the new standard of uh, of uh, managing data, so that that led us to uh, to the 3D modeling that we will share with uh, with you today, and basically the idea behind that was to take advantage of the data uh, with uh, the use of modern tools, 3D 3D modeling tools, and in my view, it's it's a way to save money uh, time. Uh, in the effort uh, on the process to unlock the full, the full potential of the better mining camp. Excellent. Um, I, you know, I can concur that uh, the Belteria hadn't been worked for probably 20 years. And, and the fact that you've considered the land package and have a big picture outlook has tremendous value, in my humble opinion. Um, let's maybe just dwell a little bit deeper on the three model now. And so I'll, I'll have uh, the pleasure of uh, having Ken uh, maybe just show us all your your work you've done behind us. And I just want to highlight to the crowd that effectively um, this has never been done. And we're in 2021 and it's safe to say that it hadn't been done for 20 years. And, you know, if you recall 20 years ago, we didn't have, or 30 years ago, we didn't have this power in terms of artificial intelligence, uh, data compilation, the computing power, and all the geological models have sort of evolved also. And I just give the example of Canadian Malartic with, uh, with the oldest Cisco uh, how that sort of was a game changer. So to me, Belterra in that regards is an excitement. So Ken, if you just want to dwell deeper on the uh, 3D modeling, I appreciate it. Well, first of all, well, thank you for the uh, the invite here. It's a real pleasure to share with you the uh, the the team effort actually that uh, the VR technical team and us here at uh, 3DGS are trying to do. Uh, and it's well underway. And I guess the, the philosophy... Um, that behind all of this is uh, when Vior approached me, um, the, the idea was, okay, well, the, the geology there has been studied for decades. Uh, it is uh, wonderful geological information that uh, has been compiled and gathered for many, many years. Uh, the problem with the data set is not the quality, but it is the way and the, the capability or capacity at compiling all of that data into one common platform and then be able to look at the interaction of all of those sources of information uh, to interpret in a different way, perhaps, the uh, the same geology that's, that has been looked over for years and years. Um, so when the viewer team approached me with that idea, uh, fell in love instantaneously with the project because it, it so reminded me uh, the, the work that was done in Red Lake Mining Camp uh, at the time I was there. And the, the philosophy I, I proposed to the VR team then was, okay, guys, what we need to do, uh, and they already knew that that was the, the way to go, but the, what we needed to do is to go from the known 
uh, using the, the tremendous data set that is available there, uh, interpret that, and from there, in a in somewhat iterative process, uh, we'll learn something uh, by interpreting that specific data set, uh, which we can, new knowledge can then be applied to uh, somewhere else and vice versa. So we initiated uh, the entire thing by uh, compiling into Leapfrog the um, entire data set that we had. Um, so it's it's covering uh, the entire property uh, that we have displayed here on screen. This is a sizable land package. Uh, I think it's 37 kilometers strike on a, on a northwest, I should say southwest, northeast sort of uh, uh, strike. Uh, and just re-highlight the fact that it's, it's 30,000 hectares, uh, which covers most of the greenstone belt, the green, the Belterra greenstone belt. So in that regards, it's a, it's a good land package, and that's that's very good. Oh, absolutely. And the um, that that next image actually shows us the uh, the the property boundary uh, with the the distribution of the the known greenstone. Um, belt, uh, which is displayed here in green, along with um, the color location of all of the historical drill holes that VOR team has been able to compile um, to to support the the creation of that 3D model. Ken, I'm just curious. Um, yes, we're talking about a pretty good data set that you guys compiled, and, and and some of that information was not even electronic, right? I mean, you had to put this all into an electronic format. And I'm just curious to see what, uh, how much data sets that you guys have to compile? Uh, quite a bit, actually. Laurent would know better. I guess the, the, the compilation work, uh, we decided that Vior was to spend time on that while um, me and, and my co-worker would be spending time more at the 3D modeling. Okay. Um, but it's quite a bit of information that has been uh, digitized, scanned, uh, geo-referenced, all of those old maps. Um, yep. Yep. And, and, doing, uh, and, and done correctly done, right? I mean, it's just not just to do it just to say we did it. You guys really did it with a, a long-term view of, of creating a good database that is solid and that will be used for the future, or I should say for future use, right? Absolutely. To answer your, to answer your question, Eric, uh, you're right. Uh, we've been really busy doing that uh, at, uh, at the VR team. Uh, and I mean, we, it's a process and we're still compiling. Uh, we're going by priorities, but I think we start to see, uh, I mean, the footprint of, uh, what has, what has been done in the past. We've been able also to nail on the field, uh, most of the work done in the past as well to make sure that the location is, is, is correct. Uh, so all these validation are, are, are in process and we're still adding new, new information on uh, on that front well, that's I mean, very exciting we we with with uh, we are really uh, excited with all that data and to be able to take advantage of it and uh, to see ken using that uh, wisely on one data set but uh, yes it's a, it's a huge work to 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 do that well, well done yep so ultimately the uh, the work that we've initiated um, ended up with uh, the creation of a, a regional model uh, that covers the entire property, as we can see here. Uh, and we've focused um, for on the regional side of things, we've focused at defining the major or major structural domains uh, that we have to play with. And as I was mentioning earlier, uh, the interpretation here is a consolidated interpretation across uh, the way I see things and the way the VR teams see things too. So we're making sure that, you know, it's not the, the consultant doing his own thing. Um, we are having uh, very regular meetings to discuss about those things and et cetera. Uh, now, uh, from that regional interpretation, many, many things uh, can be talked about or discussed about. Uh, and principally, uh, I guess we, we could separate the, the topic in two. Uh, first, what do we learn uh, from the detailed modeling work that we've done in each of them uh, deposit area, so to speak, uh, Belter Mine, Obel, 
uh, Pake, Conway in those areas here. What do we learn um, from their local geometries and local geological settings uh, when we er insert those local models into the regional model? So the one conclusion that one uh, could end up with is there is a structural domain here which is um, very, very prolific, uh, should we say, uh, and it, it it, it is that band in uh, medium green that we have in here, which is hosting uh, the Beltair mine. It's hosting Obel uh, and hosting other deposits that are known. Okay. Um, okay. And we can see the extent of the data that is available in here. So, and you can see how less or very, very little data uh, exists uh, in the extensions uh, of that. So, so that's really important uh, assessment here. Uh, it means that uh, the work that we're doing at trying to understand the local geology of those different deposits uh, may lead us to better understand how the mineralization has been um, deposited or how deposits were created uh, in, in that band uh, of prolific rocks, but depending where it is, it may have a, a, a different geometry. And by learning and understanding this a lot better, well, it's money saved in the sense that uh, future drilling or future exploration um, would be guided um, by the, the knowledge that we're gaining from that modeling work that we, that we currently do. So there's a 5,000 meter drill program that's ongoing right now um, based on your assessments and your compilation work and your, your 3D modeling. So I, 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 what I really could summarize is that you guys did your homework and you're now um, testing things. Maybe you could um, tell us a bit more about the drilling program and what are the, the various targets in more specific detail, knowledgeable that uh, time is of the essence nevertheless. Yeah, I'll begin the introduction uh, in that regard with respect to the drilling program. Uh, Eric uh, and everyone, we've recently announced that we commenced our initial 5,000 meter uh, drill program. Uh, Laurent will go into the specifics on where we're targeting and why shortly. Uh, but, you know, we want to... We wanted to ensure that we were in a favorable position uh, for this program and and going forward. So we recently closed a, a 1.49 million dollar Quebec flow through. Uh, this will give us uh, enough funds and financing to to complete the first phase and also to quickly begin a second phase in the new year uh, if we like what we see. And all indications are are very positive thus far. So. You know, I'll let Laurent go into the specifics of, of targeting and uh, rationale behind uh, the initial uh, drill targets. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Perfect. First of all, uh, I, I really think that the, the potential to discover new economic mineralization uh, is exciting in various area of the property. And uh, to be realistic on the amount of drilling required, uh, that could be, be could become really quickly overwhelming if we were to explore uh, properly all these areas at the same time. So for that reason, we decided uh, for our first initial drilling campaign to focus our effort only on the historic mine trend, where we have the best control of the geology at the moment on the property. So uh, the targets that uh, that we, we've designed uh, uh, they will follow along the mine trend, uh, along the mineralization known uh, at depths and along strike, uh, but with large step out. And between, let us say, uh, 200 meters to almost a kilometer from known mineralization in the extension mm -hmm. of strike and depths. And uh, th these are huge step outs uh, and not usually usually done by by uh, others uh, explorers. Uh, and I mean, it's a huge step out for the type of mineralization that we, we understand uh, at Belta. But our I, goal I, uh, is... I'm sorry, I don't want to do a tongue in cheek, but it's not a like Conway, if I could use that expression. And the insiders will understand what I'm trying to say here is that it's it's not drilling just to make some you know good press release. It's just 
look at uh, yeah. I've seen some of the drilling done there where they followed a vein that was maybe like 15 centimeters wide and they just did these yeah. huge PQ holes on it. Maybe we'll, yeah. somebody will say it was bulk sampling, but it was more to, uh, as we say in French, uh, la galerie. So kudos yeah. to you guys to, to, to do this in a, a, a smart, intelligent way. Yeah, that the the reason the goal there is uh, potentially immediate success with uh, eventually new uh, discoveries along strike. Uh, but I mean, we we have to be realistic as well. And th the other fact of that strategy is to really better understand the, the structural plumbing of uh, the orientation of the mineralization, the various lithology, and how does it work at depth on that particular corridor. And this information, they will become really critical to refine on 3D model and come up with higher level of targeting in the next uh, drilling phase. As we've compiled lots of data, we're still adding some new, new, new data on these, uh, these 3D model. We need to do some drilling to better, um, let's say, uh, locate the frame, the frame plumbing of, of the mineralization. And as we will get this information, we will hire the level of comprehension and uh, higher the level of targeting for the next green campaign. So both strategies there, uh, potential immediate, immediate success, and in the meantime, being really uh, uh, strategic in the way to better understand the, 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 the location of the, the potential of, of that particular trend. So in other words, I, uh, we think that all the ingredients uh, are there at Belzer for value creation. And uh, even if it doesn't hurt, uh, uh, our, our strategy doesn't uh, rely on luck. We strongly believe that mineral exploration is, uh, and value creation is a, is a process that needs to be executed with uh, rigorous science and strategy. And that's what we try to do with that first initial uh, drilling campaign. So uh, I don't know. Maybe can maybe we could uh, show some uh, some of the targets that we have uh, just to to explain. Uh, uh, I mean, some details on uh, on a couple of holes uh, that we planned. Yeah, absolutely. The um, the image that we see on screen um, is again the uh, the geo the regional model uh, displayed. Uh, with the historical drill hole information uh, as those little black traces that we see um, with uh, the the current planning um, that you guys have put together. So allow me to zoom in here um, on the, the model uh, and perhaps we will uh, just pinpoint uh, the location of the, uh, the, the two holes that uh are drilled or in the process of being drilled uh as we speak and the uh the the next targets uh that are coming up online so laurent you were explaining to me that vr strategy has been to uh from the known uh geology that we've uh, unraveled by doing that detailed modeling work uh at the different deposit areas uh, your strategy has been to, uh, as you were mentioning, to step out quite considerably. Um, so what, what we see on screen is, yeah, um, extreme west, extreme east, and the, the central portion, uh, realistically. And, and to me, that, that is the best strategy uh, right now to, to be using. Um, Ken, um, maybe if you can go into some of the details of the uh, 3D modeling and, and, and tie in with the, uh, your targets, your drill targets that you've defined, give us a sense of uh, uh, what you've defined. And I just want to highlight again the scale of, uh, of the property and what the distance between these holes are. are, are, are. Yes, absolutely. Um, but prior to getting into the detail of those proposed holes, uh, perhaps it is uh, very pertinent to um, understand a little better where the drill targets uh, are from and uh, the reasoning or the rationale between or beyond selecting uh, those specific drill holes. So um, before we dig in into the, uh, the detail of that process, that targeting process, um, 
just to to relocate ourselves again, a regional model with that prolific band uh, or structural domain here, which is hosting the Belter mine and most of the the, the known deposits in there. Uh, let's turn off that regional model and assess a little bit better um, the type of detailed work that we've done so far uh, at the Belter mine. And obviously, uh, similar type work um, has been done also on the other deposits, but probably in a less extensive way because of the uh, the, uh, the smaller size of the data set uh, that we can play with uh, at those other deposit areas. So in here, what that image shows uh, is the combination of uh, the modeling that was done on the Beltair vein itself, the Beltair mine vein in here in yellow. Um, and then um, what we've done afterward is from the geological maps uh, and the drill hole information, uh, we went ahead and modeled uh, several dikes that were seen uh, on those maps. And we are now recognizing um, a couple families of them. Um, or at three types of dikes, actually. Uh, the first one that we've uh, put emphasis on is that big orange one in here, which is a porphyry dike, uh, which seems to be later than the mineralization as it's cutting across very clearly uh, the main vein. Uh, but we can see that the, the dike itself is being deformed as well and presents uh, in lo local at local scale, um, various uh, kinks and change of orientations and things like that, giving us an indication on the timing uh, on the structural deformation events uh, versus the, um, the the creation, so to speak, of that dike and the mineraliza mineraliza mineralizing event. Uh, sorry. So, um, so we've modeled that big dike, um, and then. There were many, many other smaller dikes, uh, probably a meter wide, uh, something in that range. And those dikes are of particular interest um, as they are lamprophyre dikes. Uh, those are the ones that we see in green in here. Uh, so we've recognized a few families of them based on their uh, orientation. So you can see uh, that some are more or less east-west, uh, some are very, very oblique uh, to the trend of the vein itself in a more uh, north northeast orientation. Um, and the, the importance of them dikes is uh, as, as um, it's been documented in many, many deposits, and especially at the Red Lake Mine, where I've uh, worked for many, many years, uh, lamprophyre dikes are, are supposed or interpreted as being uh, utilizing the same uh, deep-seated structures mm -hmm. that potentially would have uh, bring, brought up uh, closer to surface those mineralized fluids uh, that are creating gold systems. So presence of lamprophyre dikes at the Belter mine uh, is very intriguing uh, and very promising in the sense that it kind of confirms that this is not a weak system. Um, it, it is a deep-seated system. Uh, presence of lamprophyre dikes kind of confirmed that. So um, so that's really good uh, in the in for the interpretation. And I guess what we're doing with that information after uh, is to trying to interpret what kind of what kind of geological phenomenon um, may have been responsible of the, the final geology and final geometries that we see uh, on screen. So maybe can uh, we could uh, start to the west of the geostoric mine trend sure. where we have a couple of holes uh, planned. And just to show to you, to the audience, uh, uh, maybe in section, uh, that uh, we have this whole plan to kill uh, and test various uh, various uh, targets with uh, one hole. 
and uh, as you can see we're really so uh, really uh, uh, well positioned to test these continuities of past known mineralization uh, at depths so just to give an idea to the audience uh, the, the the gray level there is about 300 meters uh, depths so uh, as you can see we're really testing the, the the depths of the system to really understand the continuities of these zones uh, which will uh, help us to uh, eventually end up with uh, immediate success but uh, also to better understand the continuity of alteration uh, lithologies uh, and eventually uh, mineralization so uh, maybe maybe can uh, the obel deposit uh, uh, is uh, right uh, with these uh, uh, bubbles in the orange and and uh, and pink and maybe we could show a close-up on the, that particular hole which is uh, trying to follow the plunge of that uh, mineralization but as the audience can see we are about uh, uh, more than 350 meters below what is known yet that's hole five or hole three that's whole uh, four in the planification but uh, we, we 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 will we will start drilling these holes and going forward to the to the east uh, next to the mine okay thanks so maybe can we could move on the east part between obel and the the old mine so here are two other targets following uh, the extension of uh, the old mine and Obel to better understand what's going on between both. Uh, we have uh, some structural control there. As you can see, we already also have modelized uh, some dikes uh, and, uh, and uh, structures, uh, which we will follow up and uh, validate their location to better understand uh, intersection between uh, the, 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 the dikes uh, the mineralization and the structures. So these are designed the same as we we sh we, we we saw on the first targets uh, to follow continuities of uh, non mineralization at depths and uh, and also precise their their uh, uh, exact location for uh, next green campaign. Campaign, interesting. And maybe the final one that we could show can is uh, the extreme east of the property on the continuity of the uh, old mine. So here, as you can see, we have some structural panel modelized on the main structure of controlling the mineralization of the mine. And we, what we would like to, to validate is uh, uh, as it has not been retested to the east of the of the of the mine to uh, to see if we have uh, continuities of uh, of the main shoot of the of the of the mine the past producing mine there's no exploration done below a kilometer uh, below the mine so these are also uh, really good targets but it's the, these uh, these type of uh, drilling uh, should be done but not for a first uh, exploration phase what we want to do is to assess if we really understand properly uh, the, the that past that past historic mine trend, and uh, but for sure these these are uh, good targets that we will eventually evaluate for for uh, for next uh, drilling campaign. So I think that's uh, that's what we have to share on on uh, what's going on at the moment. We're really pleased to uh, to have Ken with us uh, helping on the uh, modeling and uh, providing really good tools for for the team to execute on their drilling campaign uh, that is going on at the moment uh, at Vior at Belter. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Eric and Ken uh, for, for their support there. And maybe I will leave the, the mic to, uh, to Eric to uh, wrap up the, the, that interview. Well, thank you, Laurent. We just had a great technical session uh, that permits viewers to see the business proposition. Um, I just want to say that I think Viar has seized the opportunity in executing on its strategy and it set itself to develop results, positive results, I believe. Uh, these tangible results on the Bell Tower project are interesting to follow. 
Um, and I just want to also highlight the fact that VR has other um, projects in its portfolio. It has that hybrid strategic, strategic uh, that it's executing on. Um, so in my humble opinion, uh, VR is very well set to deliver results. And so I think I want to just thank the audience uh, for their attention and thank, thank Mark and uh, Laurent for giving us a uh, good insight and Ken, especially for giving us this, uh, this technical um, eye-opening sort of uh, elements on what's going on on the Belterra Gold Project. So I just want to thank everybody. Merci. Merci. Thank you, Eric. And we're back live to take your questions now. As a reminder, I'd like to uh, let you know as the audience that you can submit any questions that you have using the Q&A panel found on the right-hand side of your screen at any time. Uh, but with that, I'd like to start with the, a question that came in via email earlier. Uh, it reads like this. Congratulations for this impressive work uh, of compilation and geological modeling. Could you tell us more about the potential for discovery of new gold deposits along the historic mine trend? And what's your take on the relationship between mineralization and structural deformation on the trend? And this question is primarily addressed. Well, thank you. Uh, that is probably and really one of the key questions here, isn't it? Uh, you know. That's probably one of the main reason we do what we do. Uh, so thanks for asking that really good question. Uh, to answer it properly, let's first uh, relocate ourselves here. Uh, just like on screen, what we see is the location of the, the greenstone belt, uh, along with the property boundary and the concession uh, that is displayed in yellow. Uh, so what we'll do uh, is we'll focus uh, on this area to, to, uh, of the mine concession to answer that question. But let me just first introduce how it all started. Um, I guess when I first arrived in a project like this, and it's really strange comment that I will say, but I have a tendency to not even look at mineralization uh, at first, uh, just to unravel uh, what is actually the, um, the, the, the geology in which those deposits were developed without any bias. And then we can apply that knowledge to somewhere else and uh, trying to discover new deposits. So that's exactly what we've done here. Uh, so what I'll do without waiting much, uh, I'm just going to zoom in on the, the concession area. And I'll just clean up the screen here by removing that uh, green stone and we'll replace this by what I usually start with, uh, which is magnetic data or mag maps, uh, what we look at now is the, the first vertical derivative. Um, so from that image, what we could see uh, of the bat uh, is there's a, a, a really clear separation of domains in here uh, that are, are lighted by those ag, I mag bands that we see. And just as a recap, I guess, uh, from the regional model, what we've identified are those domains uh, and the central one here, which I've left uh, empty, is that mine trend uh, that we're looking at right now. So uh, let's turn this off. Uh, what we usually do uh, as a starter will define uh, those major domains. So if you don't mind, what I'll do is I'll just, as we usually do uh, in casual meeting, I'll just draw on my screen here live. Um, so those domains, as we uh, were able to see, uh, were defined by those bands of higher magnetic uh, response that we could see on them maps. Uh, and then looking at that in section, it became very obvious that uh, in this part of the area or the, the property, all of them uh, contacts appears to be trust faults uh, like this. So. Uh, first thing first, we could then anticipate if it if it is trust faulting like the way we think, uh, then we can anticipate having much more deformation than a simple faulting uh, happening in here. And one of them features uh, that may happen uh, in such a situation is to develop drag folding uh, along those major trusses. So the hypothesis has been tested and supported, I guess, by the, the mag data using the shadows and different techniques that I'm go not going to get into today. Uh, but I'll just uh, reload quickly here the, um, the, uh, the different domains that we have and just simply cut a cross section against it uh, just to show you guys the, uh, the, the general setting in which we are. So definitely trust faulting with trust 
false dipping south supported by those shadows as we can see here and things like that so that was pretty much canned uh, so the next step for us was done to evaluate within that mind trend uh, what do we see in more detail so with experience uh, looking at data sets like this and it may for the ones who did not do that in the past may look a little strange or you know you people may say well that is questionable and obviously it is uh, but what we've done uh, is to interpret the the patterns that we were looking at in the uh, in the band itself or in the mind trend domain itself to realize that in places what we could look at are little domes or donut shapes uh, like this so there are at different scales uh, mind you so so we kind of started to draw uh, those things the best we could and trying to identify um, you know those patterns so now uh, at this at the regional scale those patterns are repeating themselves those donut shapes and it gave me the um, the in, the idea that maybe what we're looking at is not only drag folding but it's more drag folding in multiple phases uh, and in which case uh, we may have developed a second phase of folding, whether after that main trusting event or uh, during that trusting event. And in either cases, what we did develop there is some sort of a dome and basin uh, geometry, uh, we think. So if we look at uh, the, the geometry of the belt there, the main vein, uh, that we've modeled so far, uh, we will then uh, very, almost instantaneously uh, recognize that donut shape in here. Uh, so if you allow me just to highlight it, uh, so following the trace of the vein up on surface, what we'll see is it seems to be dragging. Obviously, we're missing portions of that donut here. Maybe it's not exposed on surface or simply hasn't been drilled yet. Uh, that is uh, Fior um work at that point to to properly drill this uh, but we did recognize uh some uh domes and basins i guess geometry in here so what's really really interesting with that uh and we're getting close to uh better understanding that structural regime in which those deposits were developed um is and, and what's really really cool is if we look at this uh in a long view uh and then we'll just simply look north here uh on the on the thing what we have displayed now on screen is the long view looking north northwest at the the uh the main belt air vein and what we'll recognize on that long view uh supported by uh the historical long view that we have also displayed in the background uh is again if i can draw uh, another drawing here uh what we'll see is that the in the, in such a view the vein is plunging in two directions so it's plunging fairly shallowly in here uh towards the the west and more steeply uh in that directions towards the east uh, so that can give us a, an indication that overall what's happening in here and i'll just in a little box here up top uh we'll just pretend that this is the belt air mine area uh in in that sector here and perhaps this would be obel uh area a little bit further to the uh the west uh so now what we we think is happening here uh is something like this perhaps uh we're at the Beltair mine what we have is a vein that is shallowly plunging towards obel and then on the other side uh in a steeper way plunging towards the east and if our hypothesis is correct it may be actually a case like this where from Beltaire to Obel and potentially other places along that trend, uh, we're very simply repeating the same process uh, that happened at the Beltaire mine. So the first part of the, the answer to the question uh, is, is there any other potential other than the Beltaire mine? Yes, there is a lot all along that trend uh that is uh on your property so uh so on that uh if we were to go back uh and, and look at that more precisely 
I'll just turn off my drawing here and, and complete maybe the uh, the question or the answer by showing to you guys the uh, the point sets uh, that are coming from the compilation work that Vior team did from the underground drilling that was done at Beltair. Uh, and we can clearly see from the distribution of grade uh, those two plunges, those two main plunges, that's not surprising. But what's really, really interesting, too, is it seems that the, uh, the hypotheses that we have uh, to explain the regional, um, the, the regional vision seem also to be applicable at the mine scale itself. So if I can allow myself to simply draw uh, some lines like this, well, we have the shallow plunge to the west, but then in here, internal uh, to the vein itself, it seems that there are other plunges, high grade plunges that follow either one of the two limbs uh, that we have identified at the regional scale. So obviously for the mine scale, having such a knowledge in mind uh, and better understanding that structural regime very, very precisely and locally will definitely help us out uh, to unravel the, the potential at that scale. And then if uh, from what we learn at that scale, we will very simply reapply this at the regional scale. And just as a blue sky comment here, uh, if a vein has been developed in such a structural regime, uh, I don't really know why it would not be possible. Uh, and I'll use simply a different color here to highlight the fact uh, that maybe what has not been discovered yet uh, on the property is a second vein, which could be somewhat sub-parallel to the first one, uh, either deeper or higher up on surface, uh, such that at the Beltair area, all of this would have been now eroded, it's, it's gone. But as it's plunging in directions that we can anticipate now, it means that uh, we can better locate good potential targeting areas uh, based on that uh, kind of first step uh, interpretation that we have of the structural regime. So not easy, very complicated, uh, but explainable. And that to me is the good news to, uh, to get out of that uh, the, the, the project here. It's complicated, but all the ingredients are there. Uh, to develop major um, major scale deposits uh, in the area. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that, Ken. Thank you for the great in-depth answer. Um, just being cognizant of time, we do have some more questions. Um, we have a question from Peter just regarding, looks like a big bend in the geological structure here. Uh, is that a nice local setting for metal endowment? Curious to see how it fits into a broader scale of regional geology as well. Maybe, uh, Ken, could you uh, highlight the, the, the historic mine trend between the mine and the uh, uh, and the Obel deposits and maybe show that continuity uh, on uh, the model? Is, is that something possible if you zoom out? Absolutely. What? Uh, sorry, what would you like to see? To show the, the historic mine trend between the mine and the Obel and uh, show the trend and uh, maybe the interpretation that you uh, that you just did the demonstration. Okay, so I'll just reload uh, this and that. And... I think that's the sense of uh, Peter question. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And... Just being cognizant of time, uh, maybe a very quick review, um, as we do have another, we do have other questions. I mean, also, we are, um, I mean, available. Uh, and uh, I mean, you have our, our telephone numbers or address, and we will be pleased to answer the, the question if we don't have time to cover all the questions. <laughs> so is is that image uh, OK with you, Laurent? Yeah, like in a long view and highlight uh, in, uh, the, the drills that we, we have planned and the plunge of, uh, of what, you, uh, what you just demonstrated. OK. Um, well, we're live, and you're kind of caught it. Cut getting me Sorry. off <laughs> off guard there Laura, but <laughs> so, or maybe maybe we will get back maybe it's uh it's no that's fine i think we're uh we're there we're almost good to go hold on uh wrong file here uh this should be the one hey uh sorry about that 
Uh, where are you guys? Yes. All right. So that should be what you are asking for. Yeah. And maybe you could show uh, your interpretation uh, on the mind trend as you just did on the on the on like the redrawing it live. Yeah. Let's do that quick. So I'll just use that same color. So we're talking about the limb here, eroded somehow, and then shallowly plunging. And then perhaps uh, it may do something like this as we are interpreting it. Yeah. So and we could have this repetition as well at depths. And uh, so we could have some some various uh, repetition. So all these things are uh, will be evaluated as we advance in the drilling. And that's the reason we need to do some uh, deeper, deeper holes to really understand the, 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 the frame, the frame of, of that uh, is fast, fast producing trend, mine trend. So uh, uh, maybe we could go uh, with another question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this question is for Mark uh, specifically, but what can we expect over the next year out of healthcare? Okay, uh, Cam, I, I guess this is just to summarize uh, for the audience, the investment opportunity. Uh, look, we've consolidated, assembled a top tier district scale uh, gold project here at Beltaire. There's, uh, as you've just seen on the technical webinar, we've got about 12 kilometers of favorable ground field strike uh, within an overall 37 kilometer of, of favorable strike in the green field. Uh, in one of the top mining jurisdictions in the world. Um, you know, as the, as the webinar title suggests, uh, Beltair should develop rapidly. We've commenced our first phase 5,000 meter drill program uh, that should be quickly followed up in the new year with another 5,000 meter second phase, uh, given all the, the targets that our technical team has identified thus far. Uh, so there should be a, a significant amount of news flow uh, uh, throughout the coming year, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I just like to, to summarize, uh, you know, it's statistically improbable uh, that there's not at least another Beltair gold mine in this mining camp that we've assembled. Uh, you know, we believe that with our systematic approach, uh, you know, the technology that we have at hand, uh, as you've seen today, and with an excellent, outstanding technical team, that we have a significant competitive advantage to, to making a new discovery here. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, looking at the clock, unfortunately, we are getting close on time. Um, we've received a number of questions that unfortunately, due to these time constraints, we aren't going to be able to, an able to answer here live. However, make no mistake, all of your questions, if they have gone unanswered, will be asked of the group here and we can always follow up. Likewise, you can see on the slides here, Mark's and Laurent's contact information if you'd like to continue the conversation further. Um, before I hand things over to Mark for some final words before we part ways today, I'd like to let everyone know that Mark and Laurent will be back alongside Chad Peters, the CEO of Ridgeline Minerals, on Tuesday, December 7th, that's this coming Tuesday, to discuss their respective exploration strategies and what's working for them. Uh, and with that, Mark, I'm going to hand things over to you before we wrap things up today. Thank you, Cam. And listen, I'd just like to give a, a hearty thanks to everyone who's attended this technical webinar. Obviously, we haven't been able to answer everyone's questions, but uh, we encourage you to contact uh, Laurent or myself uh, for a follow-up, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to uh, to uh, give you the answers that uh, you deservedly, uh, uh, you know, are owed. So thank you very much once again to the whole technical team, uh, and uh, thank you to SIX uh, for hosting this for us. Mm -hmm.